Hello everyone, I am Argama Witch and today I am doing a video essay. So you want to be a VTuber and you don't know where to start. So you have many questions and you're just feeling overwhelmed. Well, I'm here hoping to help you out with this video and it's following part. But in this video, we're going to talk about being a VTuber, the expectations and the realities of it. VTubers are becoming much more mainstream now more than ever. Hollow Live is becoming common among internet dwellers and anime fans. VTubers have been around for quite a few years and it seems that everyone and their mothers is jumping on the bandwagon and you too want to be a cute anime girl, boy, or character. Uh, it looks fun and it looks like easy money to be had and man if Hollow Live and V Shoujo can do it, I can do it, right? Well, let's talk about this a little bit. Before we jump into the how-to's equipment and setup, I'd like to talk about the realities of VTubing. As someone who's been using a virtual avatar since the mid-2018, uh, I am one of the first five English female VTubers, and I have learned quite a bit. VTubing in itself isn't that hard. It's much more accessible to everyone now more than ever than any time before. And there are plenty of resources out there that'll help you in creating an avatar and how to set them up. But just because you have an avatar doesn't mean you'll become rich and famous. So the market is oversaturated with streamers and VTubers alike. There are thousands of VTubers all clamoring to get the attention from viewers. Granted, not all VTubers are streamers, but the vast majority are. So I'd like to talk about the expectations and realities of that. Many starting out as fans watching a particular VTuber and decide they want to start streaming on Twitch. But keep in mind that currently there are only 24 viewers per every streamer that is on Twitch. And I know that a lot are repeated in both viewers and watchers, but whereas a couple years ago it was 40 viewers per streamer and a couple years before that was 80 viewers per streamer. So at this rate, within a year or so, the numbers will likely be 12 per streamer. And what this means is that it's a very oversaturated market. It's hundreds of thousands of people talking to empty screens. And you have to be aware that being a VTuber doesn't mean you automatically get the viewers. It does put you in a niche which could help you be found or that might actually hinder popularity. Male VTubers on average do much worse than female VTubers. This isn't female models, but the female themselves. A male VTuber using a female model tends to get lower views than a male VTuber using a male model. Male VTubers that are popular either came with their own audience and are already so popular or have a really stellar and engaging personality that if they didn't use a model, chances are they would still be doing just as well, if not better, because they aren't limiting themselves to VTuber fans. I do think VTubing is a good place for those who are transitioning to be perceived as the gender they have chosen and or feel. It also allows them to get comfortable as such. That being said, the, it is the internet and there are a lot of haters out there, but I'll talk a little bit on that later on. I have seen many VTubers burn out and quite quickly because they have this expectation that just because they are a VTuber, they're gonna nail it. They will end up being, being partnered, getting famous, getting all the donations, having hundreds of subs, when in reality, that's just not the case. It's a lot of work and even more luck. Luck is a major factor in being discovered by your audience. Keep in mind that Iron Mouse, who is creating content since 2017 or earlier, it wasn't until the spring of 2020 that she received a particular raid from a large streamer that she really blew up and became one of the most popular VTubers on Twitch. Creators like Nyaners and Treya and Takahashi and so on had already built up their audience before becoming a VTuber, so their loyal fans helped boost their numbers in the VTuber community. Let's quickly talk about company VTubers versus indie VTubers. There are very few VTuber companies out there that are super successful, and trying to claim a spot in them is very difficult. For example, English Hololivers. Everyone knows that Gura used to be Sanzawa, who had a rather huge following even before becoming Gura. Or Emilia, who also had a large following as Sachi before joining Hololive. 
Once you become a company VTuber, you are required to do what they say and what they want. If you don't, you can land yourself in some hot water. Just remember the Coco incident where she showed her statistics on stream and then was put on probation. Things like that. You're given some leeway, but ultimately they own your character and its personality. If you don't do something the way they like, you will graduate, aka be fired. And once you leave, you cannot take your character with you. It's their IP. Also, the companies tend to treat VTubers as a subsection of the idol culture, the Japanese idol culture. So talks of relationship or anything like that could land you in hot water. But it isn't all bad. You'll be promoted by the best of the best and given a budget to afford your model. And I'm sure they'll expect you to have your own PC, but places like Hololife strongly encourage you to be able to perform, sing, speak, Japanese, uh, and the like. And they like to see that you already have a pretty big following beforehand. Indie VTubers have much more freedom, but you're also stuck trying to do all of this yourself. There are small indie companies, but with the exception of V-Shoujo's, I have not seen many indie companies really take off. The V-Shoujo's already had a huge following before they joined forces and became a company. This is not the norm. And I know all of this sounds really intimidating, but it's good to get a reality of the situation and not only see it through rose-colored glasses. My recommendation is to become an indie VTuber or streamer and try to grow as best as you can before attempting to jump head first into a company unless you have acted or performance experience in the past. Most companies want to make sure you're worth investing in, so be sure to show them what you've got. A lot of people say they want to be VTubers to make friends, but let's be honest. You don't need to be a VTuber to make friends. You don't even need to be a VTuber to collab with other VTubers. Even if you are a VTuber, other VTubers may not want to collab with you. Ever. So let's get this little lie out of your head. If you want to make friends, it's much less stressful to just be active in a VTuber's community. You'll make friends with the regulars and have common interests, and you may even make friends with the VTuber themselves. What people tend to mean is popularity. So the reality is most VTubers stream to 0-5 to five viewers. That's about average, and it's enough to get you affiliated in a few months. Maybe in another year you'll get lucky and get 20 to 30 viewers. Getting over 50 viewers is pretty hard unless you work at it and are really interactive with your community. If you're okay with streaming to Void, then I recommend go ahead and jump on in. With the lack of an audience will come the lack of money. This doesn't mean you won't get a few dollars here and there, but don't expect to take minimum wage streaming for content creating, at least not right away. I wouldn't worry about that until you've reached partner on Twitch, or at least 500 to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. It does look so easy when we tend to look at the popular ones. I would compare it to watching movie actors. You see A-list celebrities and are like, man, I want to do that. I could do that. They are so popular. And when you aren't looking at the fact that so many a actors are just the nobodies, they're random guy number five in the restaurant. They're that lady from that commercial. You don't think about them. They're there, but they aren't really big actors. They're kind of low rung who are still trying to get auditions. I compare most VTubers to those trying to get the auditions. If you aren't partnered or averaging those type of views, you aren't what people would call successful. I'm in this category, but it doesn't mean to give up. I'd say those that have between 75 to 200 viewers would fall under the commercial actors or the background guy with that one line in that one movie. But there are a few select that are the main focus, and even less the star of the show. And depending on your tier depends on the kind of money you can expect from it. Be it a few subscribers or donations to actually getting something resembling a living wage or getting paid to the point where you don't have to look at your bank account before wanting to buy something. Once you start getting a higher audience, companies will reach out to you. Just be sure you do your research on them before agreeing to anything. I would also recommend getting a lawyer to look over any contracts just to make sure your best interest is at heart. I've heard some horror stories. I wouldn't personally reach out to any of these companies as chances are it'll be more of commission based where you'll get cents per every sign up 
And honestly, if your viewership is small, it's not really worth your time or theirs. I know a lot of this seems negative, but to avoid burnout and the inevitable onset of depression, I wanted you to be aware. But let's talk about things that can help you as a VTuber. Well, your main platforms are YouTube and Twitch, with secondary being Twitter and TikTok. Ultimately, I say go for both YouTube and Twitch. You have a better chance of being found on YouTube, and there's always content there. Whereas on Twitch, your content gets deleted after a while. You can also try to redirect your audience from YouTube to your Twitch. I would use Twitter and TikTok as more of a way to promote yourself, to direct them to Twitch or YouTube, wherever you want to host your main content. I feel mostly depending on what your content is, is where you should host it. For example, singing and skits and maybe even drawing might be best on YouTube. Gaming might also as well if you're going to do a lot of editing. If you want to just stream, then Twitch may be your better option, although maybe is pushing it. This is probably my most asked question, but honestly, it really depends on why you want to create content. If you're doing it for the sake of doing it and everyone else is doing it, then it doesn't really matter what you create. Do what everyone else is doing and hope for the best. If you have a skill that you're good at or a skill you want to practice, I say create content for that, such as drawing or acting or singing. You can still game, but gaming itself is very overdone and everyone does it. You can pick a particular game and really lean hard into being a VTuber that plays that one specific game. Or maybe only retro games, or maybe only visual novels, and you can be the VTuber that plays those type of games. When it comes to content creation or VTubing, what's popular is subjective. There are thousands of people playing the same game, and they tend to pick a particular person to watch because of their personality, not their content. I would suggest creating content that is meaningful to you or something you really enjoy. The second one is more so if you aren't hung up on the number of views because then you can enjoy yourself and your audience will find you. Or they won't, but you'll be happy because you're doing what you enjoy. So this one's tricky. Some get super lucky and get the audience right away. Some get shouted out and boosted by popular VTubers. I don't know how they do it. I, I, as someone who has not a huge audience, let me just tell you, luck is a big factor in this. Some do model reveals and get very good numbers on their very first stream, and then it dies down and settles to a low number and they feel like failures. People will come to see what's up, but once they learn, they move on. It's the same with drama and controversy. It's a temporary thing, but in the long run, it won't be consistent. For content, I would recommend having a semi-consistent schedule, be it one video a month or two streams a week. It does help. Sometimes life gets in the way, and I know this better than anyone, as my schedule is non-existent. Another way is to be active on social media, such as Twitter or TikTok, to let people know what you're planning and get excitement. Let them be aware of what's going on. But be careful, Twitter is a terribly toxic place and the community, and the community station there. But be careful, Twitter is a terribly toxic place and the community station there could turn on you in an instant. I've seen time and time again, one day everyone is fine and the next someone does a call out boast, be it founded or not, and suddenly this new VTuber is being canceled and everyone's on the cancel train and nobody cares to listen to any side whatsoever. And yes, this can give you a temporary audience as well, but it probably won't be fun and temporary is temporary. The second most asked question I get is how to overcome anxieties of streaming and being on camera. The easy answer is to just do it, and ultimately it's right. There's no one going to make you do it, and there's no one thing that's going to get you to actually do it. You're the one who has to take the steps. If you want to start out but are unsure for yourself, here are a few things you can try. Join a Discord voice chat with active members and speak, even if it's just hello. Just try to enter into a conversation. You don't have to be super active, but it helps you get used to talking to strangers. Make a few short test videos, no audio, of you using your character and post it on Twitter as a teaser. This allows you to get used to recording. Next, try and edit a video for YouTube. 
I know you hate the sound of your voice, but get over it. We all do. Even me. And I'm listening to this right now. Just don't think about it as your voice, but the voice of your character. Record an intro or a short let's play or a skit or whatever you want. Edit it and put it online or on Twitter. Chances are no one will really see it, at least at first, but it's a start and it gets you used to the process of interacting and talking to a camera. Don't advertise your first stream so you are performing to dead air. This will let you get comfortable to the format. This way you don't have any expectations to interact with the chat, but it'll let you know to keep looking at the chat and how to stream. And if you don't say anything, no harm, no foul, because there's nobody there. Next, I'd ask some close friends to watch your stream and talk to them while you stream. Have them stay in chat and this lets you get comfortable with someone you know. It'll also let you get comfortable with glancing back at the chat and your game back and forth in order to be in a, interactive and just keep talking. Keep talking about what you're doing. You don't have to be like, well, now I'm walking over here and now I'm walking over here, but get a bit more into it. Like, how, how is it making you feel? Like, oh man, I wish I could run faster in this game. I don't understand like why they do this, or this is a really cool aesthetic. Like you can really see this, that, or the other thing. Like talk about it. Or this particular part reminds me of something in my own life. And then you can talk a story into it. Keep in mind that learning to speak to people online and creating content does not create to confidence in real life. They don't equate at all, really. If you're not comfortable with talking with people in real life, learning to be a VTuber or streaming is not going to help you feel more comfortable with people in real life. It, it's completely different things. When you make more money streaming than working, or when you make enough streaming that you can comfortably quit your job. Very, very, very few can do this. Some do it when they definitely shouldn't. They think they can grow their audience if they quit their job, but truth be told, they won't. Your audience isn't gonna suddenly spike into the like hundreds to thousands just because you've streamed a few extra hours a day or maybe you stream every day. It might give you a little boost, but not enough to warrant losing the income. There are a few exceptions to this. For example, I ended up quitting my job and I sold art at anime conventions and took commissions on the side and then made full-time content. I worked over 65 hours a week and made less than I did at my other job, but I could live off of it. But I also made sure that before I left my job, I was completely debt free and I had money in my savings. I didn't have any car payments or student loans. I made sure all of that was paid off first. And then my husband ended up getting a promotion later on, so I was able to limit the number of commissions and conventions I go to, and so now I can do it more for fun and I don't have to stress about trying to pay the bills. But this is a very rare case. Uh, I would not consider quitting your job at all until you bring in about $1,500 to $2,000 a month, and that's at the bare minimum. Try to find time to record or stream that is convenient for you. This may mean giving up a hobby you've had to replace it with this one. It may mean not making plans at certain times or just setting a block aside that you normally use for something else like watching TV. A lot of VTubers don't have healthy sleeping habits and can lead to terrible health problems. So if anything, try your best to not replace sleeping with it. There we go. <laughs> if you are streaming, be sure to pay attention to your chat. Even if you have no viewers, you may get a raid and miss it. Nothing is more rude than ignoring the people in your chat. You have only a few seconds to greet someone before they may just up and leave, and there goes a viewer. You will need to engage with them in order to get them to spend time with you, especially when starting out. If you're going to be a VTuber, you don't need to tell people you are going to be a VTuber unless you want to. I found one of the easiest ways to explain to people such as parents is look at this neat program that mimics your movements or I can start creating content online to express myself using this avatar to keep my anonymity and my privacy. Set up your stream alerts before you stream. It's one of the few things I feel people should do before they actually start streaming. This lets you be aware of followers, raids, and so on, so people don't feel ignored. I can't tell you how many times I've raided a low-numbered streamer 
to no stream alert and they have ignored the raid completely. It makes me feel bad as like a streamer who has just passed on all these people. It also makes me feel bad for all these people who are being ignored in the chat because they're just not paying attention because they have no idea because they're so used to streaming to like zero to one streamers. One thing you'll have to keep in mind are the haters. You're going to run into haters and trolls and people who harass you. This is something that you will come across, everyone comes across it. There will people that may come into your chat or your videos and insult you for using an avatar. Some may accuse you of catfishing or being a trap or being a 40 year old man, of being so ugly you need to hide behind an avatar or something. They might whatever they may come up with. You may get trolls that spam you or say racist things. You may get people who say uh, sexual or inappropriate comments. Your best bet is to try to ignore them, ban them, which usually deters them, or address it briefly and see if their next comment is still harassment or hate and then ban them. And it will happen. I do find that arguing with them helps nobody. I don't know anyone who this hasn't happened to, but their goal is to really upset you and get a rise out of you. So if you argue with them, you're just giving them what they want. So try not to give them the time of day. Ignore them and continue with your stream or video creating. I am not always the best at this as I do take things personally, but do your best with this one. Block and move on. Finally, and the most important, before you start making your content decide, why do I want to be a VTuber or content creator? What is your goal? Is it, I want to share my art? I want to create content that means something to me? I want Senpai to notice me! And don't just say, well, I want to be like Silvervale, vale, because we don't need another Silvervale. Vale. We have Silvervale vale at home. Why would we want the Silvervale vale wannabe when the original is right there? Figure this out. Figure out what you want and what you can bring to the table and hold on to it. When things don't go how you like, and when you're stuck in the middle of drama you don't want, or when your viewership drops to 10% to what it used to be, it's good to have this goal to hold on to. If you just do it because you want to and it looks easy, you'll fail, and you won't have the motivation to get back up. And I know, I know this sounds negative, but trust me, having this to hold on to is good. It'll allow you to come back to it and look at it and not get caught up on nonsense, on the dumb numbers, on the dumb drama, on all that stuff. And this is my advice to you before starting being a VTuber. This is the expectations and the realities. And I want to thank you for joining me on this long ass video essay. <laughs> I hope I haven't scared you off and if I haven't please join me for part two where I'm going to talk about hardware and software of being a VTuber. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you have a question, you know where the comments are. Be sure to follow me on Twitch for my gaming content. <laughs> and of course, become a member of Patreon or here uh, to gain access in my Discord, special access to my Discords. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.